This is Al Fritch at EarthHealing.info. Today, our topic is the federal lawsuit against Sportsman's nuclear diffusion plant processors. And we have two of the leading plaintiffs, a citizen plaintiffs, uh, Jeffrey uh, uh, Wahlberg, Burn uh, on the right, and uh, Charles Chuck Lawson on the left. Uh, they will make an official statement before they begin their talk, and they will tell us a lot about the background and the highlights that made them uh, get to the point of where the lawsuit has begun. Okay. Yes, yes. we have to make an official statement. Everything that we are saying in this interview right now is is our opinion based on the documents that we hold. We have to say that. So, yeah, ready to go. Okay. Uh, I don't know which of you wants to start. Uh, uh, you can just tell us some of the background, if you don't mind. Well, as you know, we filed the suit last Thursday. Uh, we're looking at racketeering, uh, conspiracy, uh, sabotage slash arson against the facility. We're looking at... Um, wrongful death being caused due to overexposure of radiation. And this has also affected our families. Uh, this is something that passes to four generations due to the gamma and the neutron that we have received. Uh, we're looking to get our families covered and the workers. Right now, we're right at a 79.9% .9 turndown rate. And that is because they destroyed all our radiation records. Uh, Jeffrey, do you want to say something? Well, this is a culmination of 26 years of investigation. Um, we, uh, of course, we're going through the privatization at the Portsmouth plant uh, from DOE running the facility, going to a privatized firm uh, in United States Enrichment Corporation. And what we hold is documents that show the methods that they used that were against the workers, they were against the community, they were against our families. Uh, we have videos of uh, Bill Richardson, we have uh, videos of uh, President Clinton saying if, if the government hurts you, they owe you. Uh, Bill Richardson saying, you took this home to your family, I said to, uh, Charles, I said, those are not speeches, that's testimony. And so when you're getting the top person from the DOE and the, the President of the United States saying, if someone hurt you, they owe you, and if you took this home, well, we've got documented proof that they did hurt us. And so uh, we're adamant about uh, our position. Uh, a lot of these uh, organizations are being silent, but uh, we've, we've got generational problems and we've got generational documents. Well, uh, Jeff, is, uh, isn't there a statute of limitations of six years or something? Or how there are statutes of limitation, but not on, in this case. Um, one of the things that if you'd look at, and we're talking about national security here, the Apollo NUMAC incident uh, to where uh, there was a company in New Jersey that they believe uh, uh, forwarded uh, material that was 97% from Portsmouth before uh, to the Israeli uh, nuclear uh, effort to make the bomb. Uh, so that's already been done from Portsmouth. That's the Apollo Numec incident. And uh, then on there's no statute of limitations on the sabotage of a nuclear fuel facility. So uh, what we've got is a criminal enterprise here that's been going on. It hasn't stopped. And so we're investigating it. We're going to all the elected officials, we're going to the FBI, we're testifying in Washington. Uh, these people just are not listening because DOE has a big purse and it's our money and they're giving out money to these elected officials and they don't look hard. They need to be looking harder and they need to be looking at our evidence. Yeah. Uh, Chick, do you have something to say about that? Because- Yes, I, yes, I do. Uh, when you 
let's use Zahn's Corner School as an example. They found radiation there last year. They had to shut the school down. DOE knew that was happening in 2017, waited until 2019 to inform anybody, and actually it was leaked out. Plus, they withheld information that Northwest School in Otway, Ohio, which is 14 miles southwest of the plant, that that's, that area is contaminated. And now we know with documents that we hold that Valley School is most likely, we believe, contaminated and the state uh, penitentiary that's across the road from the school. So they are withholding critical information because it's going to affect how they do their job. They don't want to do the job to the specification to stop the spread of these uh, transuranics, the heavy metals, the plutonium, neptunium, americium, cesium, technium-99. They're trying to do it as cheaply as they can, and they're exposing the communities. Uh, Piketon, they've already found uh, plutonium in people's homes in Piketon, Ohio. You just can't go in and wash that out with soap and water. Uh, you're talking almost a complete teardown inside a home to try to get rid of these things. And what and, about the aquifers? What about the water? Uh, isn't there contamination occurring there too? The we believe that if it's not already contaminated, it will be because with the, uh, the waste cell, the 100-acre waste cell that they're building, it literally is 20 feet from the Taze River aquifer. Now, the, the key point of that is, under Ohio law, you cannot be within, and this is according to Ohio EPA, you cannot be within 200 feet of any type of an aquifer. Now, if you look at the, the record of decision, it's 5,000 pages long. DOE and the contractors had a public meeting. One, they told them that the bedrock underneath is not cracked and that the rubber liner will encase it for at least a thousand years. Some of the information they didn't tell them that the other facilities that use that same rubber liner, they're having trouble with rodents, uh, groundhogs, prairie dogs, things of that nature, eating holes through these, which allows it to leak. Now, the other thing is, if you look in the addendums of that record of decision, and this was confirmed by the Ferguson Group in Washington, D.C. And one, the, the bedrock is cracked both vertically and horizontally. Two, they gave Ohio EPA $3.5 million. And they gave them a waiver, and now they're within 20 feet of that aquifer. That aquifer runs all the way to Virginia. Now, if that water gets plutonium in it, and the americium, neptunium, uh, the uh, technium-99, the water facilities don't have the capability to process that out. It takes a very uh, expensive process to do that. And that's where we say there's going to be a problem. This could be worse than Love Canal, a lot worse. Yes. Well, Jeff, your own family has suffered from this. Could you tell us about yourself? Uh, back 26 years ago and some of the things that's happened to your own family. Well, quickly, uh, I was involved in an incident. There was a two-day incident, 726, 727 of 94, that started this off. Um, ended up in the hospital. They were shooting cells, what they call cells, over top of us. Uh, through the process of court, uh, we've seen perjury. We've seen lies, lies to the United States Senate, lies to the Congress by both Doe uh, facilitating uh, USEC and then Doe and NRC facilitating USEC to the Congress on the fire. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing, but we reported often and we reported to the highest levels and we're now seeing it goes into the presidency uh, and that they uh, had a certificate of compliance that they had to uh, comply with. They couldn't make the bar, Father Fritz. They, they, all the lying, covering up, everything that they did, they couldn't make the bar to get this certificate of compliance. So the President of the United States, the National Security Council, and the State Department bypassed 
10 CFR 76, which was the code of federal regulation put in by the uh, NRC to vet the two plants that were going to take the material from Mayak, Russia. And uh, even in 99, go up 94, 99, uh, Chick is uh, telling Doe there's criminality. He's writing the, uh, the uh, headquarters, telling him there's criminality. We're writing the IG. The IG's writing back to elected officials and in our opinion, committing uh, mail fraud, uh, that's yet to be proven, but uh, he's saying, well, there's no problem, just one badge was changed, but there's a document, P-O-E-F, and that's Papa Oscar Echo Foxtrot, 150-96-0088, that was altered and sent to the Senate when we had hearings on the exposure. Well, little did we know that they were lying in the 99 uh, Comfort Inn hearings. They didn't come forward and tell that they had brought out a spec material to Piketon. Uh, they didn't tell that they had went around the certificate of compliance and more or less drove a, a square peg in a round hole. And if you look at cause and effect, when you go around the vetting, the safety, the uh, the very process of making sure that things are right and just go buy them, force that through anyway, ramrod it. The effect is you've got kids being contaminated, kids in these schools. Their schools aren't fit to be in now. They want to say, well, it's just minuscule. We said, how did it get there? It didn't walk there. It got there through the air. It's toxicity. Toxicity don't ever take the word toxicity lightly because if you ingest high alpha emitters, it kills from the inside and there are latency periods. Doe uh, says, oh, we're gonna come to your aid. We're gonna, we're gonna help you. Ask Matt Brewster and Piketon, they've slow walked this thing. They're trying to outrun it. They're not going to outrun it, the documents speak. Well, is this, are, is this criminal related? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And one of the things that, that DOE keeps telling everybody, using the term minuscule with alpha, they're saying, well, your skin stops it. And that's a true statement with alpha. But what they're not saying is that if you ingest one millionth of a gram of plutonium, you breathe it in. Once it gets inside of you, it does not come out. And you're looking on a kid, it can go anywhere from four years to 10 years before they even know they have cancer. On a healthy adult, you're looking 10 to 15 years on the latency period before they know they have cancer. It's a bone seeker. We've got kids with leukemia. We've had kids dying from brain cancer. And, and what they're classing as unusual cancers. Our don't cancer you, is 700. Don't your counties uh, immediately surrounding uh, Portsmouth uh, have some of the highest rates in Ohio? Uh, yes, Benton, 700 times. And Pike. Yes. Yeah. Well, 700 times higher than the, than the normal average. I, I'd like to say something now. Chick and I were both witnesses. Uh, you have a DOE person, Greg uh, Simonton. I think he's a honest man. He's trying to be honest and do his job, but he comes to us and we've written affidavits about it. He says, I'm not lying for those people no more. He said, Anne-Marie White told us to lie. We filled out affidavits on that, and I believe he'll be honest about it. But he said, the day that you guys stood up, the two people sitting on either side of you were my neighbors, and both of their kids have cancer, and we live by Zahn's Corner School. And he said, I can't do this no more. I can't lie. And he said, and I won't. And so then we go see that uh, both of the, uh, the EM1 and EM2, a damn, um, um, uh, Department, of Department of Energy, environmental manager, uh, Anne-Marie White, was pushed out because they're wanting to do this hallow program at Portsmouth. Well, we don't want uh, another program before we get the one that we've had straightened up. Right. And uh, there's a name, man named Gilbertson that was also 
forced out, but we've done interviews that said that they're not being forthcoming about all the plumes or the burials yes. that they've got out there at the plant. And one of them may be close to being underneath where the new halu is going to be. So uh, we sure don't want DOE doing investigation of anything. If they are perpetrators, they are not regulators. Amen. Didn't they badmouth you people uh, to legislators at various times? calling you oh, yes. dumb hillbillies. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah, Senator Brown, uh, we were in Washington. We walked uh, the halls of uh, Washington to explain what was going on. And some people were receptive. They were always kind, but they didn't really come out because Doe is such a Leviathan. But uh, Senator Brown says, we'll stay over another day. We'd like you to come to the uh, Senate uh, annex and have coffee. So when we come in there, I mean, it's like the Red Sea parting. He starts for us, you know, he sees us and he goes, I hear you, I hear you. I said, well, do you hear us? Do you really hear us? I said, we've been trying to contact you for some time and, and you're not uh, very forthcoming. I said, I looked on Open Secrets, you do take money from them. And uh, so he said, well, I've seen the dossier on you two. And if you see my fingers about four inches apart. And I said, well, did you like it? He said, well, I don't think you're the ignorant hillbillies they say you are. I said, oh, yeah, we are. We're just about, you know, we even got in that conversation with the FBI, the guy down there, uh, K.J. Hurst, that we talked to at the FBI. He goes, I'm from Kentucky. I said, well, maybe you know what your superiors think about you now. They think you're a dumb hillbilly because you're from Kentucky. And I said, we might be dumb hillbillies, but we've caught them. Well, let me ask you, Chick, did you get threatened several times by some of these very people that uh, we're talking about, different government agencies? Yes, I, I've been threatened by uh, USEC personnel, by Lockheed Martin personnel. Uh, I have over a thousand death threats. Uh, the FBI says my phone is tapped. I was told by Agent Carr North that they know who's been making the threats to my wife and my children. Uh, they told me that, uh, and this is the exact quote, says, we made Karen Silkwood disappear. We're going to make you disappear. Who said that? And that was uh, Lockheed Where? Martin, uh, Gary Madukas. And there was other people in the, in the room at the time that heard this. And I think a couple of them will tell the truth. Uh, and then he made the comment, he says, and by the way, that red Chevy Astro van that your wife drives your kids to school in, your wife's going to go out and start it up and it's going to go boom. And that's when I said, well, I think the meeting's over, gentlemen. And it got a little warm in the room after that. But they have made repeated, I've been told that they're going to come to my house. They're going to rape my wife, rape my daughter, uh, sodomize my sons. And then we're going to bludgeon them to death. And then we're going to burn your house down. And that's what I live with. I have one individual who literally came to my church on a Sunday morning to threaten me, to tell me that he's going to kill me. And I had to have some fun with him. I didn't want to make a scene in the church. I said, boy, aren't you special? I said, just think, you come to church to threaten me with heaven. Mm -hmm. I said, isn't that wonderful? But that's what we have had to live with this entire period. It has never stopped. You it, told me about 10 years ago that 56 uh, threats had been made against you, I think, at that time. And I think you had more since then. Am I right about that? Oh, oh yeah. We're, we're up over 1,000. <laughs> Al, I think I was still working at the time. And uh, when I left, uh, I had two supervisors surround me and threaten me to take me out of the plant by any means necessary and then law enforcement speak we think that means up and to killing you and I I said as much uh, there's a report of our supervision it's called the Swanson report it's one that everybody ought to get and read uh, they paid for it so it was so bad on them that they decided to withhold it and let one of the principals in the report put out what was in it um, it, everything from sexual to reverse discrimination uh, threats, but uh, I was under two simultaneous investigations uh, at uh, Bethesda, 
my supervision is writing documents that says that I'm disturbing, but the person that witnessed the incident said I was an exemplary employee. Uh, so I left there and become a nurse. I was put on the board of directors of the nursing uh, school. And then before I left uh, the, where I worked, I, I got one of the largest compliments they'd ever gotten. I said, you know, it's funny that they always think that Chick and I are disturbing, but if you check real hard on through the documents, they're the ones that are disturbing. They're, they're criminally disturbing. You people have patiently collected immense amounts of documentation. And I, we were talking about years ago. You had to double uh, uh, and uh, duplicate it because it could have been threatened, wouldn't it? But yes. your information is now available in a 76-page report, which is going to be shown how people can get it at the end of this. And it's an immense document. And I think you know every bit of it, both of you. Am I right about that? Yes. And there's also 1,200 pages of exhibits in that, yes. too. And it's going to be amended uh, Father Fritz, it's going to be amended. There's more to come, and there will be discovery that is going to show that Doe played quite a part in this. And you look at world human rights violations. I look at what was done here in uh, our two counties, even these prisoners. I mean, uh, a man goes to prison for stealing a car. He's caught for stealing a car. Should he get a, a death sentence uh, for stealing a car and uh, both the kids and the prisoners are remanded to go where they are. You have to go to school or you have to, you have to serve your time, but you, these are human rights violations. And I think you can search those all the way back to Russia. And so the people that are doing this are taking almost the Russian method and using it against American citizens. There's, there's another interesting point to this, Father Fritz, is that a DOE, when we were at the public meeting, and Jeff and I both asked some serious questions that they didn't like, but one of the things said, you know, we really don't have the money to put out to do me medical monitoring for all these kids and teachers, but yet, they had $1.3 billion to give to Mayak Russia to rebuild that city because they lost their reactor. So they had to have a new heating source for their facilities because people live there. They had to have new bus stops. They needed a new fire station. They needed new fire trucks. They rebuilt Mayak Russia for $1.3 billion and they don't have the money to take care of our sick kids my child, my youngest son, was born with a mass in the center of his brain. He was born after I started working out there. My daughter has a mass in her nervous system. Both of them is inoperable on both of them. I've had malignant melanoma. I now have chronic uh, beryllium disease because they literally wired around the alarm systems because the seals were leaking so profusely they couldn't replace them fast enough. So they just wired around them. So now the transuranics, the out of spec material that we were running through that system was leaking out. We were ingesting it and absorbing it because the temperatures in those buildings could go 135 on the, on the lower floor. You get up in the mezzanine areas, it might be 160, 65 degrees up in there. So we're ingesting it, absorbing it, uh, breathing it in, being hit by slow neutrons. We were getting massive amounts of, of neutron and gamma radiation from what they call, and it was a code word, slow cooker. And if you also look in the filing, we, there's another code word called midnight rockets. And what that was, they were, they were uh, uh, shooting to the atmosphere, expelling these materials directly to the atmosphere instead of catching it and doing what they were supposed to do because they couldn't admit that they had it there, because it wasn't supposed to be there. Well, it's, uh, you, you folks have a tremendous story to tell. And it's, uh, now you brought up the Russians. Uh, that's part of that story, too, of then sending the wrong materials. Am I right about that? Uh, to, yeah. yeah. And that, that is what part of the problem is today. Uh, yeah. the Very much so.
Yes, I yes, it is. Yes, th this material that they sent, which was supposed to be warheads, was not warheads. It was 20% assay material, weapons grade, but it was full of transuranics. And they actually did a lethality study to figure out how many people were going to die as this was being processed and sent from Russia to Piketon, Ohio. They knew with the stevedores how many of them were going to get sick and die, how many truck drivers. But what they didn't figure it on was the transuranics. That was left out. So, and that was done intentionally. So now we get this material to process that was supposed to be warheads, and it, a lot of it was not warheads. It was another material. Is, like some, of that earlier, material, uh, Chick, is some of that material uh, still available in the pipes that are being dismantled? It would be. Yes, yes, it's still in the pipes, and the guys and the gentlemen and men and women that are doing the D&D &D right now are being exposed to it. And they're letting it out into the community. Uh, Father Fritz, uh, one thing, the Energy Policy Act of 1992 was specific that it be warheads. Well, they started hedging on that immediately. USEC did. Uh, the NRC knew uh, whenever the fire happened that, that there was transuranics in there, but they wanted to suggest all the firemen got exposed to was uranium and technesium. And I said, oh, wait a minute. You knew far more things than you're, you're telling uh, what the assay was, uh, where the actual problem was with the fire. We're going, you shouldn't even have had the investigation. How did you end up with it? And they, Dr. Minuta said, you sec investigated yourself. I said, you've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding. How in the world could you have something that destroyed our capabilities of making 97% assay? I said, did you do a rule out arson? Did you do a rule out uh, espionage? There were, there were Russians there on our site. Well, no, we didn't do that. I said, huh, that's a real problem, isn't it? And it's going to be a real problem on review of an independent investigator for USEC, NRC, and DOE. Yeah. And uh, the story is very involved, and it seems to be very complex. Is there any final things you would like to say as uh, we prepare for something which could take, what, a year or so before this trial is over? Would you? Go ahead, Chief. I, I think they've got 60 days to try to uh, get it expelled from the court, but we're prepared for that. Our lawyers are well prepared for that. Uh, the next phase after that will be depositions, and we have quite a deposition list. Uh, we have already got testimony, which we have given to the FBI on the theft of the special nuclear material and how they've done it. Uh, we're not backing up on any of this. We're, we're going to stay the course. If they want to threaten us, they can threaten us. I mean, I'm not going to worry about it. We'll let God handle it. The, uh, the only other thing that I would like to say is... Uh, we lost the capabilities of making 97% assay uranium uh, in the fire. Uh, we've talked to Dr. David Minuta. Uh, I, wanna, I want to uh, give him praise because after 20 years, he did not keep his ears closed. He listened to Chick and I, looked at documents we had assembled, and we were with the night that he realized that it was arson. He said, oh my God, they've lied to me. And I said, they have. But I said, you're not the goat here. I said, the, the things that you do next is going to determine what kind of man you are. And he goes, I've got to call back scientific papers. I, uh, we've got documents they withheld. They, we've got documents that they know what the percentage of assay was and what the firemen were exposed to. But moreover, uh, we lost the, the capabilities of making 97% assay, which is a uh, national security measure, and then claimed uh, Price-Anderson Act. And uh, I'm saying, at what point do we indemnify criminal activity? We don't. And somebody besides Doe needs to be investigating. Doe always investigates. They give themselves a clean bill of health. And this should be 
the time that we stop that process. It needs to be the U.S. Marshals. Uh, it needs to be uh, FBI. FBI or uh, ATF. Uh, it needs to be somebody besides Doe because we can show you documents that they were very much part of this. There's a secret GAO document that the Congress uh, had that uh, tells what the confidence of what they were bringing into the United States. And I asked Chick, I said, you've been around, why do you think that's secret? He said, probably doesn't read well. And I said, I'd say not. There's one other little thing. We also lost the capability to produce Navy nuclear fuel. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that. We lost that capability. Is there anything that you hope to come from this uh, lawsuit itself uh, that, has, that we haven't talked about at this time? We are definitely wanting a paradigm change. We want things to be done right. This has to be done up and up. Uh, the people that are sick, we want to see them taken care of. We want to see the children taken care of. Yeah, children. Without that, we cannot, we will not settle just for money. There has to be a paradigm change. This has got to the point where it's not about money. Yes, I would like to be compensated. I, I almost lost everything I had because of this, what they've done to me. Jeff was lucky enough. He was able to find a job, but then they had me medically retired so I couldn't become a whistleblower. I'm not allowed to work because of that. So here I am, almost 69 years old, and, and I'm stuck uh, and literally almost lost everything. I need to be compensated. Um, Al, the uh, thing that I would want, especially the children, yeah. uh, know uh, wherever they do business, and they do business here, and they do business in Russia, they don't care much about kids. And you do some checking, you'll find that that's so. Uh, I, I think that is a travesty. Uh, they like to give out big checks that are shiny keys. Look what we did for Piketon. We gave you $170,000 for your water system. But then everywhere south of, of the plant and north, they've contaminated. So, I mean, what good did that do? Uh, so that they give out these big checks. And uh, on our dashboard, we've given you this, we've given you that. Well, don't try to buy my loyalty. Uh, the the Sire County Commissioners. We went to them. They said, well, we don't want to hear what you say. We talked to Doe. I'd like to know how much money the Sire County Commissioners has gotten from Doe or how much they were promised uh, uh, to to buy their loyalty, loyalty. But they threw uh, Matt Brewster and Dr. Michael Martin under the bus. Uh, and now we know what they didn't know and closed their ears from hearing. And I think they owe a, uh, I think they owe an explanation to the people of Sida County. Uh, I don't want to go back and talk to them. Uh, why, why would I waste my time? They don't hear us to begin with. Mm -hmm. They want to talk about Cape Crusaders. We didn't do this on a whim. 26 years is more biblical than it is. I mean, you know, <laughs> We, it's we a just massive don't. undertaking that you have done. In fact, it's probably the greatest environmental issue that's ever touched Central Appalachia. And I'm hoping that people will hear this, uh, see it, and come and read your document, which we were going to post at the end of this, and uh, that they will give you a lot of support. Thank you very much, Chick, Jeff, for the Thank work you, that you have done and what you are still got to do. And thank God that you're still alive. I thought of this many times in the last uh, decade. Uh, what if they pass on? They are the leaders. And so thank God you are kept and brought this to this point, and we're very appreciative of it. So I'm thank very you. Very appreciative of your prayers. Appreciate your prayers. And uh, I, I told Chick, I said, I don't think I'm the perfect vessel. One time he said, well, God picks his vessels. You don't. <laughs> well, you, you folks have held up. We're so happy. And I think it's going to come to a good end. And so uh, thank you again. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right.